right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from San Jose, just up north in California, Sankar Sundarasan. How are you doing, Sankar? I'm doing well, John. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, and Sankar is the CEO and founder of Sky Genie, a growth insights platform for B2B revenue leaders. Sky Genie's explainable AI-powered actionable insights enables CROs to drive more efficient and predictable growth and boost sales uh, productivity. And, uh, and you, Sankar, have an extensive experience in a variety of senior executive roles at HP, Trinet, and you founded Sky Genie to help revenue leaders to more effectively deal with the challenges that you faced in, in your operating roles. Uh -huh. and what we're going to talk about today is how to drive faster, efficient, and more predictable B2B sales growth and how to leverage AI powered uh, sales insights. So, um, uh, Sankar, just, just give me a, a, a baseline for a moment. Why, why did you decide to start Sky Genie and in particular with the emphasis on, on AI insights? Sure. No, thanks. So that's a, you know, that's a really good question. So as I mentioned that, I mean, I, over the years that I'd been in, you know, in, in executive roles and in, in companies really large, like HP, and you know, but uh, it's relatively less large, but rapidly growing companies like Trinet. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of revenue leaders struggle with how do you take all this the barrage of data that's hitting them from all different directions, right? From the CRM, from conversation intelligence mm -hmm. tools like Gong, from sales enablement tools like a Mind Pickle or a High Spot. There's data coming at you from all different directions, but how do you synthesize all that and get a really good handle on the metrics that really matter, right? Um, and how do you do that with as real-time data as possible, but with the level of sophistication that allows you not just to operate at the headline level, but double-click and go deep as needed, right? Because uh, and what we what I saw was several decisions being made uh, suboptimally, primarily not because people didn't have the data, but they didn't have the insights from the data, right? So um, when we founded SkyGenie, it was with the mission to help revenue leaders connect the data that's sitting in all of these, what we call data islands, right? Their CRM, their conversation intelligence, their LMS platforms and other internal mm -hmm. systems and be able to connect all of them together with the right context and answer questions um, as accurately as possible and as timely a manner as possible. So that between sales, marketing and product and other functions in an organization, everybody's looking at the same pane of glass and making smarter, more aligned decisions, right? Because the alignment between decisions that marketing makes and sales makes and product makes is extremely critical for the organization as a whole to drive more efficient growth and more predictable growth. Yeah, um, it's interesting uh, that you mentioned that uh, Sankar about the the plethora or uh, of data because once upon a time it was oh we need more data then it was like oh massive flows of data and I was like oh we can we can collect data on anything and people kind of got carried away with collecting lots of data but as you said. The data is only as good as what you do with it. The data is only as good as the insights you can draw from it. So I always sort of say it's not it's not about big data. It's actually about small data. Right. It's about the data that is relevant to what you are doing and drawing insights. So when you look at that kind of data that you're that you're gathering, that your tool is gathering from across these systems, what are the type of of aligned insights that it's it, it can give you? I mean, at the very high level, and again, I do want to come back to the really good point that you made about. Uh, big data versus small data, because one of the, you know, uh, one of the reasons why we um, took the very specific approach to how do we apply AI to generate the right insights for revenue leaders, um, a lot of it was motivated by, and in fact, you know, uh, constrained by the fact that a lot of our customers didn't have, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of data points that many of the standard AI algorithms need in order to work well. Right? So mm -hmm. I'll kind of come back to that point, but let me answer. Yeah. You know the question that you um, um, asked, which is, you know, um, when you look at an overall organization, right? It's very important for sales leaders and revenue leaders to be able to pinpoint where are their bottlenecks in the entire sales process, right? Because today we live in a world of, uh, you know, um, we will, you know, we, we, you know, in the current macroeconomic environment where there is so much economic uncertainty, budgets are being, um, you know, budgets are being cut, and every dollar of spend is being scrutinized. And we see this with our own customers, right? They're not able to grow the top line 
as rapidly at the same pace as they were doing in the you know during kind of the post pandemic expansion if you will right so now it's very important for sales leaders to be able to look at the data and the insights and say hey how can i drive a 10% improvement in overall close to $1 without hiring a single new sales rep and spending another dollar more on demand gen right mm-hmm. how can i look at process inefficiencies and rep productivity type issues and i can go fix those to get more growth with the same opex spend if you will right mm-hmm. in order to do that you really have to be able to pinpoint your look at your entire sales process more holistically and pinpoint where there are choke points in that overall sales process right once you identify the choke points right and there are probably several choke points it's mm-hmm. not just one right and you also need to be able to figure out which one which one of these things should i tackle first right so that involves building some type of a model where you can say you can tweak different assumptions and see what happens to the ultimate number you're solving for which is top line revenue right so you know for example you know you've got a conversion rate from stage 2 to stage 3 that's a choke point right a conversion rates from say stage 5 to 6 yeah. could be another choke point right but what is the optimal combination of fixing i should be doing in order to get the uplift i need on the number that matters the most which is my top line growth number that my management team and board are not giving me any relief on in spite of the macroeconomic mm-hmm. uncertainties that are to operate in right that's one area where we really really focus on right the second area is alignment between sales and marketing mm. right? so the standard conversation between any cmo and crm and we talk to both cmos and crms with our, our customers both together and one on one as well right so the standard dialogue always says sales always says hey i don't have enough pipeline and marketing yep. always says what happened to all the pipeline i gave you 2 weeks ago 2 months ago right yep. Yep. so how do you bring the crm and cmo together to say Hey, let's have a product that can very holistically take a look at how did my pipeline change between date X and date Y? The date X being when we met last, and date Y being today. Mm-hmm. Right? And what happened to the pipeline that we had? Right? How much of it got pushed out? How much of it got won? How much of it got lost? And how much incremental pipeline did we add from that point in time? So that's one conversation of looking at the totality of the pipeline and being able to pinpoint. all of the churn that takes place all of the you know what comes in what goes out what gets pulled and what gets pushed out and all that the second aspect of the conversation is is marketing able to create more pipeline in combinations of verticals products segments geographies product lines that sales is actually able to win in right even in relatively you yeah. know even in you know even in organizations that you wouldn't classify as being super large right a lot of times you'd be surprised at what the data shows the data shows that in many cases the left hand ie marketing does not know what the right hand ie sales is is good at right mm-hmm. so marketing centered by how many leads did you create right how many aggregate dollars of of pipe did you create right so they met their number in isolation right but it's sort of you know local optimization but global sub optimization the organization right. doesn't win until and unless pipe is created in areas where the sales team is able to convert that to close to one successfully right mm-hmm. so our platform looks at a lot of historical trends and it's able to combine you know uh, every dimension every vertical with every segment with every product line with every geography with every team and look for very systematically look for where are their pockets of of overperformance above significantly above average right looking at where are we quarter to date at this point in time in the quarter relative to where we were at the same point in time in quarters prior and very quickly you know um show you opportunities where Hey, by building pipeline very surgically at these right. rates, your win rates can be significantly higher. Right? You can take a lot more dollars from the pipeline you create and drop them to close one. Conversely, you know where are win rates trending significantly lower than they historically have? Right? Those are emerging, you know, trouble spots that you should pay attention to. Right? Maybe it's you know some competitors emerging that's undercutting you on price mm-hmm. or or over out innovating you on features right some combination of factors is causing your win rate to trend lower right and you need to spot that as quickly as you can and act on it right yeah. so these are examples of how we you know deliver insights that foster better alignment between different parts of a go to market organization mm-hmm. yeah there's a number of things i just wanted to come back to uh, that you talked about here and interestingly says the marketing alignment yeah that's it's as i always say i just changed the year it's like <laughs> i always just say 
Oh, it's 2023 and we're still talking about sales and marketing alignment. I would have said 2022 last year. I'll say 2024. Or in, in 12 days or whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. I'll just switch the, switch the year and say, why is this still an issue? Why haven't we settled it? But it's a good point there because sometimes, you know, you'll have marketing and they'll have like the ideal customer profile and all of this. But when sales go out and sell, it becomes... Uh, it's nuanced, right? And it be, and 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 sometimes that's not translated back or or shared or whatever. So you have right. marketing at general level, and you've got sales going. This is no good because I'm down here in the weeds of of, right. a, of right. a particular. So um, wait, let's come back to the data point because I think that's an interesting one about. Uh, so the data that exists in different parts of the organization that the data marketing has, the data sales, and data everybody has. Uh, a lot of it has to do with how good is that data. You're right. Like maybe they don't have an ex a huge amount of data, but the data that you do have, how good and accurate is that for you to be able to mine it, like you say? Right. No, um, I mean, let me give you an analogy, right? I mean, you know, uh, uh, I don't know whether you, you know, you're into airplanes and flying and things like that, but a pilot has a number of instruments, um, you know, in front of him or her, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, everything from engine oil pressure to uh, you know, a number of other, other indicators, right? But the three most important things that a pilot always looks at is speed, heading, and altitude, right? Mm -hmm. so get one of these three wrong and, you know, you're not going to make it to your destination, right? You either run out of, uh, you know, airspeed and stall, or you're heading to the wrong destination, mm -hmm. <laughs> or too close to the ground, you're going to hit terrain and, and crash, right? So mm -hmm. uh, on purpose, we've designed that platform to look at as few attributes of an opportunity um, as is needed to generate the insights we need to generate. Right? Mm -hmm. Where we see quality and data hygiene vary pretty widely, and there's a sort of a, a definite inflection point when you get into things like you know next steps and next steps, next meetings scheduled and things like that. Reps are very, um, um, you know, uh, uh, reps are not very good at populating some of those. Yep. Lot, you know, sort of you know the long tail of attributes that you want them to populate in an opportunity. But even a moderately well-run um, revenue organization demands that reps update the stage of an opportunity, reps update the close state of an opportunity, reps update the value of an opportunity, right? Because if you don't update the stage, close state, and 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 value, you really have no idea as to, you know, forget about the quality of the pipeline. You don't, you don't even have an idea as to how much pipeline you've got, right? Mm -hmm. With the close state yeah. in the coming quarter. So, there's, so, you know, um, so part of what we assume is that there is some basic data quality and data hygiene that's already existing in an organization as we go in. And where it does not, right, and where, where there is a fair amount of hygiene issues to be fixed, the deployment of SkyGenie, the platform, also helps them to pinpoint where are their you know, significant um, data quality problems that we have and who's engaging in behavior that is um, you know, further degrading the quality of data, if you will. Right? So then we can, you know, then managers can you know, provide a friendly reminder to a rep to say, hey, I noticed that you haven't done this and this. Can you please get it done, right? Or a RevOps person can get an alert that says, hey, you know, these yeah. three reps are doing things that, you know, go against sales process. So you want to kind of talk to them and have a conversation with them. Yeah, so, uh, and so a lot of it is then about, uh, is as you mentioned earlier, it's about uh, establishing the parameters. And so that, as you said there, so here's the data, here's the data that we really need to collect. Here's the subset of data we really need to collect. This is, has to be perfectly clean. The systems all need to, to talk to each other. But you also mentioned that, you know, looking at your bottlenecks and looking at the efficiency, because, you know, let's face it, a lot of times when people are confronted with bottlenecks or inefficiency, they just throw people at it or they throw or or yeah, or they just buy any any system that sort of says that it'll deal with this without dealing with the underlying issue. And I think and I think part of what you're you're saying that your system does, it's almost kind of forces a little bit of it forces you to look at your processes and the efficiency, the efficiency within, and the and as well as we said, defining the kind of data that we really need to be clean and accurate and up to date. Correct. That's exactly right, uh, John. Um, I, you know, th there is always a tendency to throw people at the problem, mm -hmm. but I think that's that's a highly inefficient way of solving yeah. the problem. Right? For example, you know, I'm just going to use a hypothetical example. Right? Suppose you know, you you know, the data tells you that 50% of the value that makes it to stage three doesn't make it to stage uh, four in your overall sales process. And we're looking at a, 
or four quarters worth of data. This is not just a on one yeah. quarter anomaly. This is a trend and it, and it happens every single quarter, right? So you can throw more people at the problem, right? But you're not going to get a nonlinear return to scale, return on your OpEx, right? So if you spend, you know, if you spend 20% more hiring headcount with the same, you know, uh, efficiency, you're going to get the same 20% output, right? It's like saying, you know, I know my car only gives me, you know, 10 miles a gallon, right? So to travel a longer distance, I just have to fill more gas. And sure, yeah. the same efficiency, I'll get a longer distance, right? Mm -hmm. The smarter way to solve the problem is to figure out, hey, what's causing your gas, what's causing the gas mileage of your car to only be 10 miles per gallon, right? I mean, mm -hmm. do you have a, an underinflated tire, right? Or do you have a dirty air filter, right? I mean, you can go diagnose what's causing your mile, miles per gallon or your efficiency to be very low, fix that, right? Then for every gallon of gas that you fill, you're going to travel a much longer distance, right? So in a, bringing this analogy to a sales team, right? If you fix the overall efficiency of your go-to-market machine, every rep you hire is going to be more successful personally, mm -hmm. and you're going to get a multiple, a much higher ROI on that sales hire than you otherwise would. Yeah. So we spoke about the, the bottlenecks at the overall level, right? But yeah. it's, it's also important to go beyond that and look at every single rep and be able to quickly pinpoint very surgically where are they struggling? Yeah. Like almost, you know, if you look at a, an organization with say 50 reps, right? Um, you're going to see a lot of clustering there. Some reps are going to struggle between stage two yeah. and stage three. Some reps are going to struggle between stage four and stage five, for example. It's very important to have the ability to take each rep's past performance, put it under the microscope, and be able to quickly pinpoint, you know, where does Bob need help? Where does Jane need help? Mm -hmm. right? And you'll be surprised that Bob and Jane probably need help at various at different places in the sales yeah. life cycle, if you will, which equates to different skills, right? Because every yeah. to advance opportunities from one stage to the next stage demands um, mastery of a specific set of skills that are unique to kind of the mm -hmm. product you sell, the persona you sell to, and the industry you're in, who we compete against, and all that, right? So we're also able to help you really quickly pinpoint which rep needs help at what stage in the sales process. And in many ways, you know, kind of you know, and then aligning all your enablement activities to go um, focus more surgically on enabling every rep where they need help. So yeah. collectively, you're able to spend your enablement dollars more efficiently, right? And to drive the right revenue outcomes that you want. It's mm -hmm. not about publishing, you know, a report that says, hey, yep. I had a how to negotiate better workshop. 90% of our reps attended it and the average score on it was 90%, right? That workshop was only probably useful for reps who struggle to negotiate. Yeah, yeah. For people who struggle to qualify or for people who struggle to do effective demos or for people who struggle to drive effective proposals, mm -hmm. most of their opportunities, most of their opportunities don't even make it to negotiate stage. Mm -hmm. right? So yeah. just doing a peanut butter enablement activity is, you know, the surface area of the organization that actually derives value from it is very, very small. Yeah. So part of what we, you know, part of what we think go-to-market leaders need to be looking at long and hard is, the efficiency of every single dollar they spend, whether it's on demand gen or enablement or pretty much anything else, and making sure that it is spent towards alleviating a specific bottleneck that exists in their context. Therefore, mm -hmm. every dollar they spend translates to a much higher, uh, you know, uplift uh, in in overall top line growth. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because that's one of the things that. Uh you know, we built into pipeline or CRM uh, deliberately was an, a, the idea of an archive, which is basically a, a replica of your pipeline, but it has all the lost opportunities in it. Uh -huh. So it goes in there. So they're, they're in whatever stage they were lost in. Yeah. So you could do, you could do a dive, you could do it at a, at a, at a high sales yeah. level and say, okay, there's issues here. You can go down to the individual, as you said, and you can say, oh, look, they lose in stage two all the time, or they lose a lot here. And right. and to your point, and and we become, and that's why you know tools like yours are so important because we just tend to, as you say, we just tend to put a band aid, we give the same band aid to everybody, and say just stick this on and it'll be fine. Right. Instead of realizing that, yeah, you might have a fantastic opener, but they're not very good as a closer. So what do you do? Do you try and make them a great closer, or maybe do you pair them with somebody who's a great closer who's not a great opener? But it allows you to be so much more creative when you really drill down and understand people and understand Correct. the bottlenecks. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, in this age of data-driven decision-making, you know, we think that every single decision that the sales leaders make, revenue leaders make, more, but not just sales, but more broadly mm -hmm. revenue leaders make, need, you know, has the potential to be 
um, you know, the quality of decisions have the potential to be significantly elevated, mm -hmm. making them more data driven and more real time data driven and, you know, and uh, driven from, you know, and insights drawn from data that just not just comes from a CRM system, but data that is coming from a CRM system, but it's also enriched with data that comes from a conversation intelligence product like a gong, for example, or a learning management system like a mind tickle, for example, right? because at the end of the day, the most powerful insights are derived not just from one source of data, but by combining yeah. data from different sources around the same subject. In this case, the, the subject could be a rep, the subject could be a product line, the subject could be a region or a team. Doesn't matter what the subject is, but the ability to very seamlessly combine uh, data from multiple sources and derive holistic insights is, I think, critical. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been, uh, Sankar, this has been really fascinating. All of Sankar's information will be below this video. But before we go, do tell us more about uh, about Sky Genie and where it's going to go and, and, and you think some of the uh, exciting things that AI is going to continue to bring to the table. Sure. Thank you, John. No, at Sky Genie, we're on a mission to help revenue leaders deliver that efficient growth and predictable growth that their board senior management and investors are demanding right and in this and in this day and age where there is so much data hitting us from all different directions i think it's incredibly important that revenue leaders have this uh, you know co-pilot if you will right yeah. that can synthesize the data from all of the different sources of data and give them actionable insights and answers and you know sophisticated answers to specific questions that they want to ask and answer repeatedly right and so sky genie is on a mission towards empowering revenue leaders to make smarter, more aligned growth investment decisions uh, by using, um, you know, explainable AI powered insights. Um, and, um, and, and you know, so when I say explainable AI, I mean, you know, we're very differentiated uh, from the standpoint of what is typically done in the industry, most of which is black box AI, where sure. you can get the algorithm, you can get the, you can get the algorithm to give you a prediction, yeah. but you don't have the ability to double click and see how the algorithm came up with the answer, right? And right. in the world of, of revenue and sales, where a lot of times sales leaders come to the table with high, with a, with a, with a, you know, with a lot of you know gut feel and and opinions, mm -hmm. a lot of it is backed up by years and years of experiment. Sometimes you know the data just the data just tells you something that is counter to what your gut tells you. Yeah. But unless you can make it explainable, right? You cannot make them take a different decision than what their gut tells them, right? At mm -hmm. the end of the day. AI AI powered insights are only as good as uh, they're actually acted on, and 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 you know, <laughs> if if you if you don't act on an insight, just delivering that insight hasn't unlocked any incremental value. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, Sankar. As I said, fascinating stuff. Uh, I would uh, encourage you to go check out Sky Genie. All of Sankar's and Sky Genie's uh, information will be below this video. Uh, thanks again, Sankar. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you, John.